In this lesson, we're going to be looking at scale diagrams. And by the end of it, we should be able to learn the purpose of scale diagrams, learn the use of scale diagrams, learn how to draw a proper vector diagram, and learn how to use vector diagrams to solve problems involving vectors. So first off, what are scale diagrams? Scale diagrams are used to reduce the size of problems. And certain problems, for example, drawing of a map or drawing of building plans, would not be possible unless you reduce it by using a scale. We will be using scale diagrams to do vector analysis. And what we will be calling them are vector diagrams. So how do we use it? First off, what you need to do is you need to choose a scale. And you choose the scale the same way you would when you're doing the scale for building of a graph. Once you've chosen a proper scale, all you need to do is simply take all vectors and draw them one after the next, head to tail, while maintaining the lengths according to the scale and the angles with the positive horizontal x-axis. Now you may be wondering, what does it mean head to tail? When you are drawing a vector or representing a vector with a diagram, you draw an arrow of a particular length for that vector quantity and you simply call this here the head and this here the tail. Once you're finished representing all the vectors in a diagram, you simply draw and measure a line from the start point of the vectors to the end point of the vectors and you use the scale to convert it and this will give you the resultant. The resultant is simply one vector that represents the combination of all the vectors. And by now you're probably thinking to yourself, well this seems a little bit confusing, so how do we use this? So what we're going to do is we're going to find the resultant by considering cases. And we're only going to consider two vectors at a time, and we're going to solve problems involving parallel and antiparallel vectors, perpendicular vectors, vectors at an angle by using the parallelogram law and then I'm going to take all of these and summarize it into something called a polygon rule that will be used to solve multiple vectors together. So first off let's look at parallel and anti-parallel vectors. Suppose two vectors, 6 units and 15 units respectively, act on the same body. What is the resultant if they were parallel and if they were anti-parallel? Now first off I use the word units in most of these cases. The reason I use the word units is to generalize the concept. This can be replaced with the units for any vector quantity. For example, if the vector quantity is a displacement, we will use meters instead of units. And you will see more vector quantities later on. First off, we need to choose a scale. The scale can be chosen by simply looking at the values that you have to represent and finding the LCM. In this case, I will use one centimeter of a vector to represent three units for the vector quantity. So this six units here will be converted to two centimeters and this 15 units here will be converted to five centimeters. I draw a two centimeter arrow with the tail at the starting point and the vector head at the end point. Now it doesn't matter where I start the vector. I can start it anyway on the page. Where the vector ended at the head I will draw the next vector which is the five which is represented by a five centimeter arrow and we will see that at the end of it here is where you will finish drawing your line that represents your resultant. When you measure this line here for the resultant it is measured it will measure seven centimeters and when I use the scale I can see that seven centimeter represents a 21 unit vector. Now I did not draw this line exactly on top of this because the overlap would make it difficult to see the initial vectors. In the case of anti-parallel, let's say we start with the 2 cm long vector that is pointing to the east. I will choose east in this case, although it is not stated in the vectors above. So 2 cm east and then where the vector, so this is the start point, and where the vector ended, I'm going to draw the next I'm going to draw the next vector that is five centimeters long, and this vector ends here. My resultant is going to go from my start point to my end point, and it is going to have a length of three centimeters. When I use the three centimeters with the scale, I get a vector quantity of nine units. And this is how you do 
parallel or anti-parallel vectors whenever you're giving, given a particular direction. Please note that the resultant also gives the direction in which the vector quantity would act along with the magnitude of it. So let's consider perpendicular vectors. Let's consider a vector 10 units pointing north and 15 units pointing east. Our scale will be chosen as 1 cm to represent 5 units. So first we draw the 2 cm long vector that represents the 10 unit and then we draw the 3 cm long vector that represents the 15 units. And then I join the start point to the end point with a line called the resultant and I measure that line. It measures in at approximately 3.6 centimeters and you can try and draw this for yourself. It doesn't matter if it is that you decide to choose the horizontal vector to draw first since what will happen is you will get the exact same vector for the resultant. Once I am finished getting the direction of the resultant and the magnitude of the resultant by measuring it then I will simply use the scale and figure out that it represents a vector of 18 units. So let's look at finding the resultant of two vectors with an angle between it. We're going to consider a vector 12 units at an angle of 30 degrees to the horizontal x-axis and another 18 units pointing in the direction of the horizontal x-axis both of which act on the same body. So first off I would like to tell you that we need to get a scale so I'm going to use a scale of 1 cm to represent 3 units, which will convert this 12 unit here into 4 cm and convert this 18 into 6 cm. Now we must draw the horizontal x-axis since we are introducing an angle. Next I'm going to put the body that these two vectors are acting on. From there I am going to simply put the vector attached to this body that is pointing in the direction of the horizontal x-axis which is 6 cm long and then I am going to put in the 4 cm vector representation for the 12 units at an angle of 30 degrees. Next what I am going to do is I am going to take a compass. I am going to take the compass point and put it at this point here and open it to the length of this 6 cm vector. Then I'm going to take the compass point and shift it in this direction to the end of this point and I'm going to draw an arc. I'm going to repeat the exact same thing. I'm going to put the point of the compass here. I'm going to open the pencil point up to this point here and then I'm going to shift the compass point all the way down to this end and then I'm going to draw another arc. Once these two arcs are drawn I'm going to take a vector representation and I'm going to draw a line from here all the way to the point of intersection. And I'm going to do the same from down here. Once that is finished, I'm going to draw a resultant vector by simply drawing a line from this start point to this end point. I want you to notice that this vector here one after the next just like we were doing before but what we had to do was we had to draw a parallelogram so that we will be able to get the vector done properly we needed these lines here to be perfectly parallel so that they can represent the vector remember when we did the perpendicular vectors earlier it says that sorry I said that it did not matter which one you started with notice horizontal vertical vector resultant vector notice vertical horizontal resultant vector is the exact same so we get a value of 9.7 centimeters approximately and by using the scale we can see that this will represent a vector of 29.1 units now, how do I use a polygon to actually solve multiple vectors? Now remember, in all cases before, what we were doing, no matter what the vector did, we simply placed the vectors head to tail. 
And all we did once we finished drawing those two vectors is we simply connected the start point and the end point. And the direction the arrow pointed in is the direction for that vector. And once we measure that line and use the scale, we, was able, we were able to find the resultant. So let's say, for instance, this is a start point. And I have a vector that goes in this direction, then this, then this, then this. This here would represent the end point. So what I need to do is draw a vector from the start point to the end point. And that will be the resultant vector. So if it is that you have multiple vectors, you can simply use a scale and use this polygon representation to finally just simplify the whole vector down and you'll get your answer very easily. So you can reference these two textbooks for any further information you may, requ you may require or you can simply send me a message and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you.